Time now for Eye on Africa, the headlines. Central African Republic's new president is sworn in. With international peacekeepers heading home, he now faced the daunting task of rebuilding the nation. Meanwhile, the UN says it's keeping its peacekeepers in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Doubts over whether planned elections will go ahead have been and, and a growing concern of unrest. And the EU welcomes the arrival of the head of Libya's unity government in Tripoli, saying it's a unique opportunity for reconciliation. Start with the Central African Republic, where new President Faustin Archange Twadera has been uh, sworn in. His victory in last month's election runoff was seen as a step towards reconciliation in the wake of the intercommunal violence that broke out in 2013. Now faced the challenge of uh, building peace and enacting reforms in one of the world's poorest nations. This from our team in Bongi. At Bongi's largest stadium, security was tight. People queued for hours to find a place to sit or stand. Inside, the atmosphere was electric. There was a warm welcome for interim president Catherine Samba Panza as she arrived to pass over power to Foster Archange Tuadera. It's the end of the crisis. It's the end. Everyone here has been expecting it, but now it's here. So I'm optimistic and think this is the end of the problems in our country. The new president was sworn in in front of more than 150 foreign dignitaries before calling for a minute's silence in honor of the thousands of victims in CAR's conflict. The minute ended with a cannon blast and rapturous applause. People came to the stadium to hear what their new president planned for the future. No one left disappointed. He promised people here in the Central African Republic lots of reforms like the economy, the agricultural and energy sectors, because energy is the source of development. What we expect from him is that he acts on all the promises that he made to the people here. This is a new chapter for Central African Republic and time now for Faustin Twadera to get to work. That starts in the days to come with the second round of parliamentary elections. Well, French troops followed by a UN mission intervened in the Central African Republic to stem the intercommunal fighting. With reconciliation efforts now underway, they're set to pull out by the end of the year. But as France Van Katz, Flan Van Tetz reports, the country still faces a host of challenges. A new president for the Central African Republic and the moment to announce an end to the French intervention in the country. In the space of two years, with a reduced but perfectly adaptable force, the French army has been able to complete all the objectives it was assigned and is ready to hand over to the UN and European Union missions in the Central African Republic. I can confirm the end of Operation Sangaris at the end of 2016. France sent a force of 1,600 troops to the Central African Republic in December 2013, following an explosion of interreligious violence. A March 2013 coup by the Muslim Seleka militia led to the creation of Christian anti-Balaka militias. Thousands were massacred on both sides. Under international pressure, the Seleka's leader stepped down and Catherine Samba Panza was named interim president at the start of 2014. France extended its mission in February of that year, but months of violence followed and the country is now effectively partitioned despite the presence of 11,000 UN peacekeepers and 1,000 French troops. The mission was also stained when a UN inquiry found that French soldiers encouraged children as young as seven to take part in oral sex in exchange for water, food or money. The peace is still fragile and a humanitarian crisis ongoing. Almost half a million people, the majority of them Muslims, live as refugees in neighbouring countries. Another 460,000 are displaced within the country. Meanwhile, the United Nations has decided against cutting back its peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, this amid growing fears of instability. Elections are due in November, but they're in doubt, with President Joseph Kabila suspected of planning to extend his rule. For more, I'm joined from New York by our correspondent at the UN, Jessica Lomazioria. Good evening to you, Jessica. The UN clearly very concerned about the situation in DRC. 
Absolutely, Chris. Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General, has expressed grave concern over the situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, the risk of political violence in the lead up uh, to the elections, which are scheduled to take place in November. Uh, but there are concerns uh, that the possibility of those elections actually taking place as planned it is dimming, as it would seem that Joseph Kabila, the president, is positioning himself uh, to stay in power. So concern over that here at the United Nations and calls uh, for uh, all the parties uh, to engage in political dialogue and to ensure uh, credible, uh, transparent uh, elections uh, and the process leading up to the elections. And what are those peacekeepers going to be focusing on? Well, they will now be focusing mainly on the protection of civilians. Uh, the humanitarian situation is dire uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, with uh, some uh, 7.5 million people in need of humanitarian aid, according to the UN, and some 1.5 million uh, displaced inside the country. Uh, so the uh, MONUSCO soldiers will be working uh, to strengthen uh, their links with the civilian population in order to protect them. Uh, this resolution also also calls for more accountability uh, and transparency. Accountability in particular when it comes to crimes uh, committed by uh, DRC's security services. Uh, now, there was some thought that perhaps there could be an eventual reduction uh, of this peacekeeping force, but no, uh, although the Security Council has taken note of Ban Ki-moon's uh, letter back in December uh, calling for a reduction of uh, 1,700 troops in that mission, uh, it will not happen for the time being because there are real concerns uh, of violence in the lead up uh, to the planned elections there. This is, Chris, still uh, the biggest UN peacekeeping mission in the world with uh, some 20,000 troops. Thanks very much, Jessica. Libya next in the EU's welcome the head of the UN backed unity government's arrival in Tripoli. As El Siraj, a businessman appointed under a deal struck back in December, arrived in the capital by sea with a naval escort. The strife-torn countries had two rival administrations since mid-2014. The one based in Tripoli has demanded that Al Siraj leaves. But the EU says now is a unique opportunity for reconciliation. Many on the streets of Tripoli seem unconvinced. There's tension. People are tired. There's no salaries, no money. There'll be no victor and no vanquished if we return to a constitutional legitimacy. The de facto government is unwilling to consent to the people's demands. It's a government imposed by outside forces and Western powers. Meanwhile, a sign of hope amid the chaos in Libya as a media and arts college opened its doors to visitors in the city of Misrata. Established in 2014, it caters to budding journalists and artists. France Van Katz, Ben Barnier has more. Training to become tomorrow's Libyan storytellers. These are some of the journalism students at the Misrata College of Arts and Media. I've been dreaming of becoming a journalist since I was a child. After graduating from high school, I heard that the Arts and Media College of Misrata was going to open its doors. I worked hard, I applied and joined the school. Misrata is hardly your typical college town. It made international headlines in 2011 when rebels and troops loyal to the ousted dictator Muammar Gaddafi clashed to control the coastal city. Today the country is still in chaos, but those who founded this college are trying to bring hope to the younger generation. The Faculty of Arts and Medias has made it possible for these students to pursue their dreams and to showcase their work. In Libya, we need to change our perception of the arts and culture. We need to support these young talents and help them grow artistically and intellectually. Besides honing their artistic skills, these students also learn how to brand themselves. The school recently held an exhibition and sold several paintings to a local businessman. And finally, international hacking group Anonymous has launched a cyber attack on Angolan government websites in retaliation over the imprisonment of 17 political activists. The sentences, including five and a half years for rapper Luati Birao, were handed down for a rebellion against President Jose Eduardo dos Santos. He's been in power since 1979. The activists insist they're peaceful campaigners for his departure.
And that's it for Iron Africa. Do stay with us here on France Fancat. Life in Paris continues with Mark Owen. The Observer's Direct. Villagers in Burkina Faso have had enough of robbers and cattle thieves. To put an end to it, they set up their own militias, the Cogriegos. But these vigilante groups have become so powerful that the authorities are very worried. Join us as we investigate with the help of our local observer. The Observer's Direct on France 24 and France24.com.